Ladies and gentlemen, so thrilled to see all of you on this beautiful day, beautiful Monday. It is with great joy that I welcome you all to the ceremony marking U.S. President Day. Today, we gather to commemorate the legacy, the lifetime work and the historic contributions of many remarkable individuals who have led the United States with vision, courage, and dedication throughout the history. The President Day is not only a celebration of the leaders who have held the highest office in the United States, but also a reflection of the enduring ideals and values that have shaped the friendly nation. As we gather here today, let us take a moment to reflect on the sacrifices made, the challenges overcome, and the progress achieved under the leadership of these extraordinary leaders. Their enduring legacy serves as a beacon of hope and inspiration for generations to come. The fate of our country is also intertwined with the acts and deeds of so many of them. To each and every one, to the eternal dear friends of Kosovo, we say thank you. In this spirit, we are gathered here today to honor their legacy and to reaffirm our commitment to always further deepening and enhancing our unique and historic alliance. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite Ocarina Choir to perform American Anthem. Thank you so much. 
I would like to invite Madam President Ms. Vyosa Osmani Sadriu to join me on the stage for a brief speech. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Ambassador, dear Jeff, Major General Stephen Osborne, Tanderuar Zoti Rejepi, Zoti Mustafa, Tadashur Piesmaras, Shum Tadashur Faminga, Korio Karina, Tanderuar Piesmaras, Che Sod Nayeni Bashkuar, Pertanderuar President of the State of Bashkuar at Americas, Mitchtem Dainta Kosovas, Friends of Kosovo and Friends of the United States. Today, right here in the heart of Pristina, we pay tribute to a day that resonates far beyond the borders of the United States, President's Day. A day that celebrates not just the individuals who have held the office of the president, but the spirit of democracy that they represent. It is a spirit that the United States of America has shared generously with the world, and one that has had a profound impact in our own journey as a country. These leaders, from George Washington to Abraham Lincoln, from Franklin Roosevelt all the way to Bill Clinton and to the present day, have not only shaped the destiny of their country, but have also lit a beacon of hope for democratic aspirations across the globe. Their legacy teaches us that leadership is about putting service above self, and that the true measure of a nation's greatness lies in its commitment to the dignity and the rights of all of its citizens but equally so to the alliances and partnerships it builds. The relationship between the United States and the Republic of Kosovo is a testament to these shared values, from our struggle to, for freedom and independence to the building of our strong, resilient and democratic institutions, the United States has stood by us, offering support, guidance and friendship. Many U.S. presidents have played a pivotal role in this journey, understanding that the quest for freedom and democracy transcends geographical boundaries. Last year, I spoke about President Clinton and his commitment to the people of Kosovo, refusing to sit idly by and watch innocent people suffer. He became our voice when decades of oppression and discrimination culminated in a genocidal war against us. Today, I turned the page to another chapter, a chapter about President Biden, the current President of the United States, a man whose journey from the halls of the Senate to the corridors of the Vice Presidency and now to the very pinnacle of leadership of, of the, as U.S. President has been marked by a strong friendship to our country and our people, especially during the pivotal moments that have shaped our trajectory. President Biden's support is a true testament to the deep-seated bonds of friendship that have long defined our partnership. He doesn't just understand our aspirations for freedom and democracy, he stands shoulder to shoulder with us in our ongoing quest to fortify these ideals. And as he stated in a message to us in 2021, he said, I commit to you the U.S. will remain Kosovo's steadfast partner so that together we can prove the democracies are able to deliver the needs of their people. And just yesterday, we all commemorated another special day, the Day of Recognition of Independence from the United States towards the Republic of Kosovo through an extremely strong and supportive message by President Bush, who was the very first president to receive a delegation from the Republic of Kosovo after we declared independence. Indeed, let us all remember the contribution of all these presidents, showing once again that the support towards Kosovo has always been bipartisan. And let us also remember that democracy requires constant vigilance, dedication, and a willingness to act in the service of the common good. Together, inspired by the legacy of so many U.S. presidents and supported by the bonds of friendship between our peoples, we will continue to strive for a future marked by peace, prosperity and equality for all. Today and every other day, we are eternally grateful for the sacrifices made by American soldiers on our soil, for the diplomatic efforts that have helped shape our statehood through so many outstanding ambassadors and especially the current one, and for the continued investments in our society and economy by every single part of every single U.S. institution. 
This gratitude is deeply embedded in the hearts of every member of our society, in the hearts of every Kosovar. Ladies and gentlemen, may the relationship between our two countries and the friendship between our peoples continue to flourish, and may God bless the Republic of Kosovo and the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. I will kindly also ask the U.S. Ambassador of the Republic of Kosovo, Mr. Hovenier, to join me on the stage. Good afternoon. Happy President's Day. President Osmani, General Osborne, distinguished guests, children in particular. Today marks a widely celebrated public holiday in the United States of America. It's President's Day. Now, this holiday was originally established in 1885, and it began as a celebration and recognition of just one president, the first president of the United States, George Washington, and the holiday falls very close to his birthday. But we figured something out, which is while President Washington was and remains one of the seminal figures in our history, he was not the only one. And we took a decision as a society to make the holiday more all-encompassing and to include and honor all United States presidents from the past to the present, which is precisely what we're doing here today in Pristina. Now, in honor of President's Day, the White House Historical Association, which is a nonpartisan, nonprofit partner to the White House, has established a tradition in which American diplomats join their hosts abroad to pay tribute to statues, monuments, and busts of U.S. presidents around the world. And thanks to the efforts of the White House Historical Association today, embassies and consulates of the United States all around the world are celebrating American presidents and their connection to the world outside the United States. Now, this doesn't happen in every country around the world. It only happens in countries that have made the decision and made the effort to have some representation of a United States president and other countries. So today in the United Kingdom, people will be gathering around a statue of John Adams. Today in Paraguay, people will be gathering around a statue of Rutherford B. Hayes. There's a trivia question for you. And of course, today in Kosovo, we are gathering around a statue of President William Jefferson Clinton. Now, I am proud to join my counterparts around the world in paying tribute to the office of the President of the United States of America and recognizing the strong U.S. connection with the people of Kosovo, as embodied so clearly by this statue of President Clinton. And I'm truly honored, and on behalf of the United States, I can say we are all collectively truly honored that President Osmani and her team have led the effort to ensure that today, on this day, on President's Day, we pay tribute to all U.S. presidents, and we pay particular tribute to President Clinton. Thank you, President Osmani, for paying tribute to our holiday in this way. We appreciate it. Now, I believe this initiative, while it is a global phenomenon, is particularly relevant and special here in Kosovo. Last year, I quoted President Clinton, and I hope you will forgive me if I do so again, because I think his words are so important in underscoring his personal commitment to this country and to, these, and to the people of Kosovo. In 2019, when President Clinton visited Kosovo, he said, quote, I will always be proud of the fact that I happened to be the President of the United States when you needed someone to stand up and say no more ethnic cleansing no more people running out of their homes. No more killing innocent civilians. There's got to be another way. In, as many of you know, in 2009, President Clinton was here, probably right about where I'm standing, for the inauguration of this statue. And at that point, he said, quote, I am profoundly grateful that I had the chance to be a part of ending the horrible things that were happening to you 10 years ago and giving you a chance to build a better future for yourself. So while, as President Osmani rightly pointed out, 
the commitment of the United States to the people of Kosovo predates President Clinton and postdates President Clinton. And I can tell you myself about things that I have seen President Bush and President Obama and President Biden and President Trump do for Kosovo. I am pleased, however, that the President in place at the time of some of our most consequential choices and consequential decisions directly relevant to and critical to our support for the people of Kosovo to chart their own destiny rather than have choices imposed upon them by others um, took place during the time of President Clinton's presidency and that he showed extraordinary leadership and courage in advancing that cause. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for letting us share our president with you because I think many of you tell me he's our president. I couldn't say it any other way. And thank you on behalf of the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. We will continue with Ocarina Choir. They will perform the song, This Land is Your Land. Thank you so much for everyone gathering here today. I hope you will enjoy this day. Thank you again.